What's up, everybody? Badass Games. Tomb Raider 4. The Lost Library. No med pack run. Yes, this is a very difficult level to get through without using a med pack. And it's also 3 o'clock in the morning on a Friday night, and I've been drinking. So, we'll see how well this goes. Okay, so this is where we left off from the Temple of Poseidon. We actually want to crouch and go this way. I actually thought I was backtracking when I did this, and uh, no, this is the proper way to go. This is going to lead us into the big area known as the Lost Library. And I'm sure a lot of you are familiar of, of this place because of the spinning gears and the, and the poles that makes it very difficult to get through this without using a med pack. Now the first thing you'll notice when you come into this room is a big door right in front of you, and that is the ultimate goal, is to open that door to finish the level. Now if we look to the left, we'll see three doors, and if we look to the right, we'll see three doors. And also, if we look, we'll see a balcony that also has some doors on it, for a total of um, a bunch of doors. Now there's a couple doors down here we can't open. This one right here is, uh, we can't open this thing right now, um, it's to the left of the entrance and all the way in the back and there's one to the right and at the very front that we cannot open either. These doors can be opened and we will eventually open them from the other side. Okay so the first door we actually want to go into when we first enter this area is over here to the left and it's the center door. So go ahead and walk up to that thing and push it open. This way is going to lead us to the spinny gears that do a bunch of damage and prevent us from getting through this without using a, a med pack. But we're going to actually get through this without using a med pack. Uh, one thing you want to do is you want to equip your wide shot ammo and blow these uh, bases open while you're traversing your way down there. Now, in order to get down without using a med pack, you actually want to walk to the edge and then wait for that gear to get out of the way. Take a hop back and watch that gear and then run and jump. Make sure you're on one of the sides too. Take a shotgun out, blow open these bases, these bases, and take the items that are inside of them. Once you have the items inside the bases, do it one more time with the uh, spinny blade and the uh, directional thing. Wait for that guy to get out of the way. Move guy. And fall down to the bottom here. Now we enter this area right down here, we can actually get around this blade pretty easily because we can jump and grab the edge there. And so far we've taken no damage. Now we want to switch our shotgun ammo to normal shot. Because we're going to fight a new enemy that we haven't encountered before, and it's a golden guy. And we want to keep our distance while at the same time blowing shots in his chest. His chest is the weak spot, and it's very hard to hit. And if you keep your distance, uh far enough, then you'll hit him every single time. Well, hopefully hit him every single time. And you'll see this golden star here on the wall. Go ahead and use your crowbar and take that thing out. And pick that thing up. Okay, and once we have the star, we can actually also claim a secret. And it's, as you enter the room, it's over here to the left. There's a big gear right here. Go to the other side of the gear, and all the way around it. And base your back to the gear, take a hop back, hold the action button, and you'll grab the edge for the ladder. And we can actually go down here to claim some items, which is awesome. Now this item consists, or this secret consists of a small med pack, revolver ammo, and Uzi clips. Now once we have all that, let's go ahead and climb our way out, same way we came back in. I've got a comment from somebody that wanted me to use my Uzi ammo, because I haven't used them very much. And the reason why is because I'm actually saving those for special occasions. And I will actually be using those Uzi clips in this episode, so you're in luck, guy. Okay, now the first one way that we want to go is over here to the, to the left of the entrance. There is a ladder on this little monument when we claim the first star. This is going to get us to the area that's going to um, open up a gate, which will let us get more stars. You know, a whole bunch of Tomb Raider stuff. Pretty typical. Now just follow this passageway, and we'll enter this room here. Now we want to make sure that our 
normal shot, shotgun shells are selected and take that gun out because there's going to be another golden guy. It's very hard to hit, especially if he's close. We got to we got to keep a, a certain distance from that guy in order for the the shots to count. And it's very hard. Now over here to the left, you'll see a door that's expecting a key. And we're going to get that key here in a second. But the thing is is we got to kill somebody for it. And so we're going to go do that here pretty damn soon. All right, one more of uh, these golden guys. Keep your distance, blow a hole in the center, and he will take a plunge pretty damn quickly. I think that the shotgun is the most effective weapon against those guys. Okay, now when you enter this area, you'll notice the hole there in the ground. What you want to do is you want to go to the left side of that thing and fall down backwards while holding the action button because she can actually use the ladder to get down safely and then crawl your way underneath here. Now when, when you get to the end here, you actually want to pull out your Uzis because your Uzis are going to be very effective against the guy we're about to fight next. When you come in here, you're going to get cutscene of this guy who's going to act like uh, a badass. And we're going to teach him a lesson. He's going to mount his horse and be like, yeah, I've got an axe, shield, and a horse. What now? And I'm gold. You're like, dude, I was gold once too. I was in Midas' palace. The idea here is to actually make sure that you can always get a shot on his uh, on his chest. And if you can do that, he takes a plunge pretty damn quickly. Take your shotgun out. Wait for him to come at you. And then, uh, yeah, just he takes a lot more shots than the other guys, too. You can tell when you hit him because he goes, uh, uh. He makes a sound to let you know that you actually hit him. But this guy is just tough. Come on, guy. Okay, I'm not landing any hits right now, actually. Okay, you're being an asshole. Wow, I'm surprised I didn't take any life. Hit him! There we go. Okay, now when this guy dies, he actually drops an item, and we need to pick that up because that is the key to the door that we saw before. But before we actually go over there to open up that door, we have a little bit of business to take care of, which includes a secret. So if you don't care about secrets, then uh, skip ahead. Equip your normal shot crossbow bolts with the sight attached. And what you'll see here is you'll see a door that away for a second. You'll see a door here, and it's got all this mechanical stuff. Well, what you want to do is you actually want to take out your crossbow, and you want to look and follow this mechanical stuff up to this ball right here, and you want to shoot that thing. And you'll see it dangle there, and which is awesome, but it actually opens up this door, and you can get the second secret of the level. This secret actually contains a large med pack, some shotgun shells, and some Uzi clips. Once we have all that stuff, we also have the key that we need to open the door. So let's go back. Just crawl your way through there and climb up this ladder. The same way you came. Sweet, now that we have that key, let's go over here to this door and plop that thing right into the keyhole. Door's gonna open, let's go in here, pull this chain, and it's gonna get a cut give us a cutscene. Now make sure you don't hold the action button because she might actually shut that gate without you even knowing it. Okay. Um, because she does act when, right now, when you, uh, one of the cutscenes happening. You can actually move her around. So do not touch, just hold it once and then let go. Okay, so now let's go ahead and exit this place that we were in. The hard part's coming up, guys. The hard part is coming.
All right. Now, make sure you fall off of this safely. Which I didn't do. I actually took a little bit of life, but we're going to see if that's okay. Um, the, now, you can actually go that way that I uh, was about to go to. Um, but this way is actually a little bit safer. There's less chains and less mazy. There's not a whole lot of mazes to go through. So let's just dodge these chains like a boss. And come into the here, and we will find this uh, this door here that we can open up. Now, if you went the other way, you would still come into a similar room, and you would actually fall down into the water in a similar manner. Um, you may take uh, you may end up taking a different route, but you will come into the same area, which is this one right here. In fact, you will come from this way right here, and you will see the door straight ahead. Now, if you actually came the way that I came, which you just saw, you'll come from this direction. And what you want to do is you will take a right to go into this this gate. And in here, they actually give us the other two stars. Sort of like, it seems like they would have done more with this. Like they meant for this to be an area for one star and maybe they want us to go another place to do another thing. So it's not, it sort of seems like it's incomplete. But regardless, this is a long enough level, it doesn't even matter. They did a really good job with this level for sure. Okay, now that we have two of those stars that we just plied out, and in fact we actually have three because we stole one earlier. Let's head back over here to the left. Assuming you came the way that I came. We're backtracking now. Oh, come on, Lark. I'm getting stuck. Really? Really? Alright, there we go. Kind of hard to see with that thing there, but you're just going to climb out just like you do any other water. Dodge these chains just like you did when you got here. And then we'll come into to, uh, this very familiar area that we were in. And now we will begin the trek, the uh, long journey back to the big area. Okay, so Spinny Blade, don't give a crap about it. However, now things just got fucking real. Okay, so now they're. I'm gonna save my game. Actually, I'm gonna line myself up before I save my game. Um, what we want to do, what I want to do, is I actually want to get on this pole while facing, like, to the corner of it, like so. And now I'm going to save my game. Now that I have my game saved, this is all about timing and positioning. Positioning has been taken care of, now it's all about timing. So I'm going to wait for this gear to spin around, and I'm going to wait for it to get to the corner there, right there. As soon as it starts moving, I'm going to jump. Hold the action button, climb up once, and take a hop back. You'll notice I didn't take a whole lot of damage from that. Take a step back, and I'm going to do the same thing with the timing on this gear right here. As soon as it gets there, it's going to start moving. Jump, grab the edge. And this one, I don't actually have to climb up at all. Just hop, and then boom. We're at the second level. we got one more to go through. One more to go through. And now we got to make sure that we actually face the right way. Because this wall up above is kind of difficult to, to uh, get around. And as you can see, it's actually catacorn to where I'm standing right now. That would be the proper place to stand. So this corner right here, I can actually see a wall right in front of me on both sides. Now the tricky part here is to make sure that I'm actually facing the pole. And if I'm facing the pole properly... Oops, I didn't want to take out. Facing the pole. Ah, oh, crap! I just lost my angle. Angle. Yeah, I should be good now. Let's take a step back. Take a look what's going on here. Wait for that gear to get to that point. Hop, and then there we go. I got through it without using a med pack. Thank goodness. Now let me save my game again because uh, <laughs> that was hard, and I don't want to have to go through that anymore ever again. No, thank you. Now that my game is saved and I have not used a med pack, I'm going to go into the planetarium. Now before I go there, let's take a recap on what happened here. I entered this room, and I went into the door here on the left side, the center one. That, lead, that led to the place that gave me these three stars in my inventory. Now that I have these three stars, 
I needed to go to the planetarium. The planetarium is on the right side at the far corner. Right over here. But, before I go in there, I want to go in to the center door here. So basically, I want to go into the two center doors first. The first one on the left, and then the second one on the right. And then, once we do that, we're going to come into this area. We're going to spawn two fire spirits, which means we got to go, because we do not want to use a med pack, right? We need to get into this water that's over here. And we wait for those guys for a second. Okay, they're both dead. I'm good. Okay, now while we're here, let's take a look around. Let's grab our shotgun. Let's choose the wide shot ammo. And blow open these vases. That thing had nothing in it. Great. Now, if you look on the ground here, you'll notice that there's this ring pattern. And this um, basically correlates to the planetarium which you will see in a little bit if you don't know about this level. Now, if you actually stand on this planetarium, you'll notice that Lara kind of peers up into this into this area, and you're like, wait, what is she doing? What are you doing, Lara? Well, what you want to do is you want to take out your gauntlets. Not your gauntlets, but your binoculars. You want to take a look at what's up in there, and you want to hold the action button to turn on the light. This gives you the answer to the planetarium puzzle. From the center out to the edge, is the following sequence. You see blue, white, green, red, and then yellow. Remember that sequence because that is the solution to the puzzle. Blue, white, green, red, yellow. And now that we know that solution, we can actually go do the planetarium and do it properly. Now these vases actually have stuff in them, so make sure you blow them open and take the things that are in them out of them. Okay, that had nothing. Screw him. Let's go to the planetarium. Now the planetarium, like I said before, was the far door on the right hand side. Big door, right hand side, far door. And we have the solution. It was uh, blue, white, green, red, yellow. And with that solution we can actually get this puzzle very easily. There's another vase. Basically, if there's a vase around here, blow it open because it probably has something in it. And this is the planetarium. Now let me, I have to forewarn you, this is very, very annoying and time consuming. They give us one of the, one of the clobes here. This is the blue one and clearly represents Earth. Okay, remember, blue was in the center. And so we're going to put this guy in the very center of the planetarium puzzle. So, bear with me while I do this, because this is going to take a lot of time, and there's a lot of block moving that needs to happen. Alright, so push this blue guy into the center, and then we're going to open up one of these gates, that's what one of the stars are for. Once we open one of the gates, we're going to get some more pieces that we can put into the planetarium. Now you know that you got the right piece in the right area if there's a, a blue, if there's a glowing ball that hovers above it. So in this case, I put blue in the center, which was the correct answer, and it gave me the ball above it. Okay, let's throw one of these golden stars into this receptacle. We're going to open this gate. Revealing, oh, what color is this? I have no idea. Oh, it's the yellow one. Represents the sun. Okay, now if you remember, the puzzle was red, I'm sorry, it was blue, white, green, red, yellow, which means that yellow is the outermost piece of the entire puzzle. And if you actually look at the puzzle, you'll notice that the outer ring receptacle is so freaking far away oh my goodness okay right here I'm gonna illustrate that putting the wrong piece on the wrong tile does not illuminate the globe above it and this is one of those cases so there you have it that's how you know you got the wrong answer in case you're having a really hard issue with this puzzle push it Laura go faster 
No, wait, take your time. It's only YouTube space, right? And then push him all the way over to this thing. And there we go. That's one piece down. Or that's two pieces down. We got three more to go. Okay, so another golden star. Place them right there. Opens this gate. Gives us another piece. And this one is... The red piece. So we got blue, white, green, red. So this belongs on the, the second to outer ring. Okay, so she's standing on it right now. That is the ring that we need to put this one on. Now let's see where the hole is for this thing right here. So let me follow this ring. Oh, it's right there. Okay. So I need to pull this guy all the way to that ed to that location. Again, very, very time consuming and very, very annoying. I really wish they would have thought this one through because, man, I guess they wanted me to move uh, pieces around a bunch. Honestly, I like this puzzle. I don't. I, I keep talking uh, shit about it, but honestly, this is a really cool puzzle. I like how um, it's like an old school um, map of the of the stars and the way that they used to think about how the stars um, were um, aligned and how they actually how they thought they used to evolve revolve around us it's just pretty cool okay so this piece right here is the is the white piece it looks gray but it's same color basically this guy goes to the second ring from the inner or the very from the very in center because I mean it looks like the moon so this piece is the moon, and it goes right next to the Earth. Now let's see exactly where that piece goes. It actually goes down there, just to the other side of the Earth. So I move him, not this tile, but to this tile. Alright, let's push him into place. We're almost done. We got this guy and then one more piece to go, and then we've completed the puzzle. Push it. Alright. Now this guy, clearly the green piece, goes into the only place that's available. And that's that one right there. The shortest piece by far. I mean, it's only taking one, two, three, four, five moves to put it in this place. Compared to the other pieces that took ever. Let's push this guy. There we go. And once we get that done, we'll see this shocking animation. It's gonna open this door. Let us into this area. Take shotgun out. Play base. Pick up item. Move on. Ooh, m another base. Blow him away too, huh? More item. Okay. Now this is one of the doors on the on the bottom floor that we can actually open from this end. And you'll notice that it actually leads us back into the area. And this was the door on the left side all the way back. Okay. So let's recap where we've been. This way right here leads to the gears. Leads to get the three stars. Okay. This way leads to the solution to the planetarium. This way leads to the planetarium itself. Now there's another area that I'm going to go to right now. 
that we haven't been to yet, and that's this one right here. This is going to lead us to the solution to the fire serpent puzzle. Now what we want to do is we actually want to grab our shotgun again with the normal ammo equipped. Because we're about to fight two of the golden guys head to head, and it's going to suck. And the shotgun is the most effective weapon against them, in my opinion. Alright, so here we go. There's a gun. Don't hit me, don't hit me, don't hit me. Gotcha. Yay. And we can put away this base if we want, but it has nothing in it. Okay, we walk up to this scroll, and it seems like it's still... Yeah, we still... Okay, this thing is kind of weird, and I haven't figured out how to actually activate it, but you, you can see that there's a scroll on this pedestal, and that it's somewhat see-through. Sort of like it's ethereal or something. Well, I haven't figured out exactly how to activate it, but I know that you can, and I think maybe we got to go into the fire serpent room first before we can activate it. Um, now, I came... I came from this door right here. This is one of the doors that I opened from the other side. I also came from this direction right here. So what we want to do is we want to enter this room and we want to go over here and into the fire serpent room. Now since I don't have the solution because it was blocked off, I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to actually show you how to solve this puzzle without needing it. I mean, it tells you what to do. It does. It literally does. You just got to kind of understand what it's trying to tell you. So what you gotta do in order to solve this puzzle easily and effectively, without even thinking, is to actually pull this guy right away. Pull him. And then go over here and pull this guy. And go in a circle. And just continuously pull the ones that you come across. And eventually you'll get back to the beginning, and that will be the end of it. I mean, don't even pay attention. So, basically the way that this puzzle works is that when you pull one of these guys, not only does it turn him on or off, depending on his current status, but it also turns on or off the guys that are straight across from him that follow this, this line right here. Okay? So, for example, this guy right here, he's off. If I pull this lever, it's going to turn him on. Not only is it going to turn him on, it's also going to turn this guy right there on but it will also turn, well, let's see what he's connected to here. He's connected to this guy. It's going to turn him off. So, the idea is to light them all. Light them all. That is the, the way of the puzzle. So, as you can see, what I said happened just now. We're going to do that a couple more times, and eventually they will all be lit. Alright, so when I come up to this guy right here, you'll notice that he's off. And the guy, the two guys that he's connected to are also off. So when I throw this thing, it's going to turn them all on and solve the puzzle. But in solving the puzzle, we spawn a fire spirit. And we got to kite him all the way back to the water. Because, um, yeah, we don't like fire spirits. Oh, crap. Fire spirits are bad, especially when you're doing more med pack runs. Get away from me, guy. You tripping. Shit. Get out of the way. Go, 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 Lara. To the water you go. And he is gone. Don't have to worry about him anymore. Alright, so I finally got rid of him because honestly, that's like the one thing that you gotta do. As soon as you find a fire spirit, Either find water, or according to commenters, find an ice spirit. Alright, let's head back into that fire, that fire serpent room that we just solved. Because not only did it spawn those two guys, or that fire spirit, it actually spawned, or it actually raised two platforms. And we're going to use those platforms to climb up to the second level. Yeah, weird step, right? I mean, the old guys back in the day had to do that too, right? Alright. 
Now when we enter this room, you'll see a ladder right here. You can actually climb this thing. And indeed we want to. Well, maybe you want to. In my case, honestly, I'm just showing you what's up here because there's something up here of somewhat, some value. And it's a small med pack, which is of no value to me. Blow those things away. The small med pack is here in the last one. And now let's get back. Let's climb down this ladder again. Oh, I just wasted a shot. Oh, well, right? Uzi ammo. I like Uzi ammo. Okay, now this is at the actual exit to the main room, but on the second level, okay? And um, I'll go ahead and tell you right now that we need to find an item. And once we find that item, we can go into this room right here and use it in order to complete the level. Okay, so the item that we are after is actually on the other side over here. We want to open the first door over here and enter. Now before we go in there, I'm actually going to open up these other doors and show you what's behind them because we will eventually come to these areas, but we will not actually go through the doors themselves. Okay, so if we continue this way, and before we actually walk off the edge here, we can go down there if we want, you'll see this area with these wooden planks blocking you from the, from the ground below. We're actually going to come from the gate over there to the left and to come into this room, and we will do that here in a, in a little bit. And to complete this area, you'll also see this door right here. Let's open this guy and see what's inside of it. We actually come into this room right here. And if you notice across the way, let me get my binoculars out to show you what I'm actually looking at. That's not binoculars, Lara. You'll see there's an item on a pedestal. And we want to go claim that thing, but the thing is, is that when we enter the room from this side, that chandelier actually will spawn in a, a fire elemental that will chase us around. And I don't, feel, I don't feel like going back downstairs to put them out. So I'm not actually going to take any step forward from here. So let's turn back around. Let's go in this first door that I was mentioning earlier. And I'm actually going to save my game because it's been a while, and. We're almost through this, actually. Now that we have the game saved, what we want to do is we want to run off this thing. And then before we actually get to the end there, we want to jump and grab this ladder here. This is going to get us the third secret of the level. It's over here to the right. Walk to the edge here. And you'll see a bunch of shaking. What's actually happening is there's a ball rolling because they assume that... I fell downward instead of grab that ladder. Jump and grab in the air and you will slide right into the secret. Claim the large bit the large med pack and the what kind of it's just normal shot. Uh, crossbow bolts. Fall down and let's take a look at what happened. So we would have actually came out of this this lion's mouth from that hole that you see right there. And that boulder would have attempted to kill us. And that's what that shaking was, was that boulder trying to uh, figure out how to kill us. Okay, so what we want to do from here is we actually want to stay on this ramp, which is what the boulder came down out of, and aim for that lever right there. Okay, what that lever is going to do is it's going to raise a couple of... Well, if I can hit the thing. These platforms right here, they are not raised, and we need to raise them. So that's what it's going to do. Oh shit. Almost got hit by a frickin' boulder. Pull the lever and it's going to raise the platforms. Now in doing this, it's also spawned a, a, a golden dude. And uh, I'm not going to worry myself with him. I'm actually just going to finish this area. He's down there, so just use your normal shot, shotgun shells. 
Shiatkin shells and take him out. Okay, now when we uh, when we get to this point, what we need to do is we actually need to aim ourselves for that rope that we see up that we see in the distance. Okay, because you can't stand on him in very many spots, but this one you can. Now when you get here, you want to pull this rope just once. That's all you need to do. And we want to hop down off this lion, this lion's face, backwards. Grab the edge, fall, grab the edge, hold the crouch button, and press forward. And crouch your way into this. Now if you don't hold crouch, she will actually try to stand up into his mouth, and she will fall right out of it. And you, and you can actually get out of that easily, but remember, there is a, there's a guy down there that we're trying to avoid. Okay, so now that we're trying to climb the throat of this lion, which is an interesting thing, thing in the, thing in the job, we're coming to this room. Now this room, um, it's going to open up a couple of gates. That one opened, and it's like, okay, well maybe I should go that way. Sure, but we can actually go this way first and then come back. Now the reason why I want to go this way is because I will enter the room and claim the item that's on this pedestal. Remember, I looked at that with my binoculars just a little bit ago. And there's the uh, the thing that would have spawned the fire elemental, and it's out right now. And if you want, you can actually open this uh, thing, this uh, hatch. Okay, and you can actually fall down that way to take him down and put him out, because that hatch leads down into the room with the water. Or at least the area with the water, not the room itself. Okay, so I came back, and I entered. I I stepped on a pressure plate that actually shut this door behind me, and now we're stuck. Well, now we need to use our minds here. There's a torch, and there is fire if you stand on this tile here. So let's uh, put the torch to the fire. Smart enough. Let's turn around. Now a torch that's actually useful. Okay, it doesn't try to scare away any scarabs because they are really not afraid of it. And we come into this room that I that I saw earlier also. And you see the wood here. Well let's burn that wood. We got fire. We got awesome. Toss that thing onto it. Burn it. Burn it and man, I bet Laura wish wishes she had some s'mores right now. I know I do. Wait for that thing to burn and then it'll like crunch. and let us down into the room below. Now when you get down here, if you move around, she'll actually look at a particular spot and you're like, wait, what, wait, what is she looking at? What is, she, what are you doing, Lara? She's actually looking at this scroll right here that I'm standing on top of. You pick that up, well, she's actually looking at the spot. She'll continue to look at that spot. But you pick that up and that is actually the item that we needed all along. So let's just equip this uh, crossbow bolt. Bust open that base and claim the item inside. Some normal shotgun shells. Sweet. Now that we have those things, whoops, we actually want to head out this door right here. Now this door is the last of the six doors on the bottom level. We finally opened it from the other side. Now all the doors on the bottom level are open. Okay. But we want to get back up to the top floor because now the item that we have belongs up there. And there's only one door that I haven't gone through yet. Now if you remember, the serpent, the fire serpents were over here on the left side of the very back. The very back door. And this is the way that we used to get to the top before. And we can use this again to get back up there. I'm sure you're wondering what I picked up, and it was actually, uh, let's take a look. Music scroll. You can only use it. I'm surprised I can't, I never actually tried to pick up that, um, that fire serpent scroll. It tells you the answer to the fire serpent puzzle. I'll go actually look at that here in a second, as soon as I place this thing and use it. Okay, so I came out here again, let's go into this other door that I have not been in yet. Oop, 
face. Shotgun. Bite shot. Boom. Who's Eclipse? I like. So here is where we need to use the music scroll. We place it onto this pedestal. She's gonna read from it, and she's gonna play some pretty crappy music. Yeah, I'm sorry, that music didn't make any sense. But I guess if it's a secret passage, then hell yeah, that actually made a lot of sense, right? Okay, now we follow the corridor that it leads us to into this room right here. And this is the big open room. We also have a chain that we pull, which opens the door to finish the level. Now, before I go that way, I'm actually going to go check out that uh, fire scroll room because I'm not sure why. I haven't figured out exactly how to activate that thing yet. And it's probably activated now. Yeah, it is activated now. I bet as soon as you enter the serpent area, it activates. Because now I can pick it up. Let's take a look at what it says. Fire Circle Scroll. Examine. For the serpents to live, all must first be stilled. Provoke each in turn, and the circle will burn complete. So basically saying, make sure they're all out. Go in a circle and turn all the fires on, which is what I did. Alright, so anyway, let's go and finish this level. Now, before I actually walk into the finishing thing, I wanted to give a shout out to one very special person. And this person I know has a YouTube account. I'm pretty certain of who it is. Um, but this person that I'm about to announce is actually on Tomb Raider Forums .com. And this person has promoted my, my channel so many times on TomeRaiderForums.com that they deserve their own special shout out. So I would like to thank you very much to Peeves for your amazing support on Tomb Raider Forums. Keep it up, and thank you very much. Okay, so, end of video. I am Badass Games, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take it easy.